Good morning, peoples. How you doing this morning? It's, uh, what is it? Tuesday, the 18th. Um, yeah, it's morning time. It's just starting to get light. Um, it just started to get light a little bit ago. It's part way through the process of <laughs> getting light out. cruising my way down to Eugene. I've got some steel tubing to deliver, the same place I delivered a week ago today when uh, my daughter Bailey was with me. Uh, going back there again from the same place to the same place. So hopefully you guys can see me. I did the dome light thing again, so I'll check that out. Uh, I think it was a little too light to really tell when I checked it before, so I know it's a little darker now than it was. See how it looks. Uh, I don't love the videos where you can hear me talking but you can't see me. So, the sunrise is kind of cool. Heading south, so the sunrise is off to my left. It's like orange and pink and I'm just sitting here waiting to get unloaded, or while well, they're unloading me. So I'm sitting here getting unloaded. It's cold. I left my window down when I shut the truck off. I don't know if you can see my breath, but it's cold. <laughs> um, now my hat's cold because I was sweating after I untarped, so I took my hat off to cool off. Um, and I was still hot, so I left the window down. Not that big of a deal. Anyways, um, just thinking about. Um, the project I'm working on at home. Figured I'd kind of share it with you. I don't know that I've told you about it. I think I did in one video, but I think I edited it out. I know I did in one video, but I'm pretty sure I edited it out. So, um, I've been really into cars since I was, I don't know, not old enough to drive. I remember back in the early 90s probably I used to get like all the mini truck and magazines and stuff and really like love mini trucks and I would draw pictures of mini trucks and stuff all the time. And then um, I got my license and I've had I've had tons of cars. Um, had low riders and 4x4s and imports and old cars and I've had I've had everything. Um, uh, when I was real young, you know, I was into, like I said, I, I liked the mini trucks and actual lowriders, like wire wheels, hydraulics, all that. Um, so I kind of did that when I was young, and then I got into 4x4s for a bit and realized that's really expensive because you break stuff all the time, and so then I kind of, um, uh, I took a break when I got married and had kids and stuff, and I didn't do much with cars for a while, and then after a few years, kind of. You know, I wasn't really messing around with a lot of that when I met my wife, so she didn't probably, you know, she had never seen that, and then after, I don't know, five or six years of being together or something, I was like, you know, I want to build another lowrider, and so, anyways, more recently, I've had a bunch of uh, older things with airbags. I had a 76 Chevy Stepside that was all airbagged. Um, I built a 55 Pontiac that was airbagged and um, uh, 
um, I had a 63 GMC project. That one never actually made it to the road before I sold it. Um, I got rid of the, the 76 Chevy probably between six months and a year ago. I don't remember exactly when it was. Um, I got rid of the Pontiac maybe six months before that, so we'll say a year and a half ago. Um, and then the, the last one I got rid of was the 63 GMC project, which that was around the same time frame as the 76 Chevy. Uh, I still have like the engine and transmission and I stripped the, the 76, I stripped it. Um, so I have the engine and trans in my garage, I traded all the airbag stuff away for a uh, ZX-7 sport bike, um, sold some other parts of it and whatnot. All I have left really is the engine and transmission. Anyways, so I haven't had any projects for a while. Um, so. Let's kind of jump back a bit. When I was when I was probably 12, my mom bought a, a 89 Mazda B2200 pickup. You know, this was in like 1990, and it was a mini truck. It was lowered already, had some fancy wheels and a tonneau cover, and it was pretty nice for a mom truck. And my moms didn't have mini trucks like that. It was, you know, it was a nice little truck, um, and so I loved it. I mean, it was a mini truck. Right? I mean, how, who's how many people's moms drive a lowrider truck? So, and she had that since, um, since then. So I've always wanted it, and I've been telling her I've wanted it for years and years. She's had it 25 years. Um, so it's not the same truck now that it, that it was, of course. It's, you know, it's much older now. It's, uh, it, at one point along the way, got stolen I was still a kid when it got stolen, and whoever stole it, like, ran and crashed it into a building or something, so insurance fixed that, um, but one of the wheels, um, was destroyed, and they couldn't, they couldn't get those wheels, so she put different wheels on it, and well, insurance did. Not nearly as nice. I don't know what happened to the tonneau cover along the way, but it's gone. It's paint's fading on the hood and stuff. It's, you know, it's not, it's not the same truck it used to be. Um, so anyway, she's, she's been telling me she'd give it to me when she retired. She wouldn't need it anymore when she retired. Um, and she hasn't retired yet, but her husband retired like four, five, six months ago. I don't remember when. So she figured since he was retired, they, they didn't need the extra vehicle anymore. So she gave me the truck. So I immediately went and got a full airbag set up for it. I bought some smoothie, 15-inch smoothie wheels, had them powder-coated red. Um, bought some 60 series, some narrow 60 series tires for it, and then some some like two and a half inch portal wall, white wall things. Um, so I'm kind of doing a rat roddy type, um, I don't know, build on it, I guess. So, um, so I got the the tires and portal walls mounted on the wheels. Um, I put all new ball joints in the front end, and then um, I modified the lower control arms. The uh, ball joints, lower ball joints mount under the lower control arm. Since it's a torsion bar suspension, the lower control arm basically sets the height. You adjust the torsion bar, that adjusts the lower control arm, everything attaches to the lower control arm, so that kind of adjusts the height. So. I modified the lower control arms and moved the ball joints to on top of the control arm, which lowers it, I don't know, like an inch and a half or something, without doing really anything else. So I, I moved, when I was replacing all the ball joints, I moved the, modified the lower control arms and moved those ball joints on top. Then I cranked the torsion bars way down. Um, I removed a couple leafs from the rear. Um, so now the frame is almost sitting on the axle in the back. Um, so basically at this point the truck's just really low. Um, I haven't started putting any of the airbag stuff in. I want to, I'm going to do the rear first. And I have all the components. I have the four link stuff and all the bags and compressors and tank and, you know, I have everything except airline and fittings because I'm not going to buy that until I have most of the hard parts installed so I know exactly what I need. I'm not sure how I'm going to set it all up yet. Um, and then... I need to buy notch for the rear, which in the past I've just made a notch out of like box tubing or something, but this time I want to just buy a welded notch kit just to make it easier. So 
I need to get that, and then I'm gonna I'll pull the bed off and start doing the notch in there and building the floor lane. So, anyways, uh, maybe I'll include a picture of of what it looks like right now, just so you can kind of see. And um, maybe I'll put in uh, some pictures of some of the other cars that I talked about. I'm not sure, but. Um, Just figured I'd give you a little bit of a glimpse of of what I am into outside of work, I suppose. Um, really, I mean, it's work and my family. I don't find a lot of time to work on the projects anymore. But I worked on the Mazda some this weekend. I finished up lowering the rear end and actually took it out and drove it around a bit and whatnot. So, um, anyhow. Like I said, just figured I'd give you a bit of a glimpse of, of what I'm into outside of work. Um, so, that's it. So, as I suspected, <laughs> there's, uh, there's no loads down here. So, dispatch said, start heading back to Portland and get a hold of them when I'm on the, the south end of Portland, which I've discussed that before, that's kind of the the norm if you're if you're deadheading back towards town from any direction. You kind of check in when you're just outside of town um, to see where you should go. Uh, so I need to get out of here, first of all, which I probably need to just make a UE up here. Um, and then I'm heading back to Portland, which is kind of good. I figured it was going to go one of two ways. Either I'd deadhead back to Portland, or I'd deadhead south to Roseburg or Medford or something to get a load going back up. Um, I've got dinner plans with my mom tonight. We were going to try to do it last night, but we decided to put it off till tonight and hope that I was available. Um, so if I can get back to Portland, I'm sure by the time I get back there, um, it'll be late enough in the day, it'll be 11-ish, where uh, all I'm going to do is preload for tomorrow, probably. So, we'll see. Um, don't like turning, uh, making those sharp turns like that with, with the spread axle. Um, you know, it's one thing with a tandem, but you guys that, uh, that pull flatbeds or pull any kind of spread axle, because I think there's, isn't there, uh, reefers or dry vans that have a spread axle? I don't know. Anyways, it just drags that front axle sideways. Um, but the, that's really the only way to get out of here. The, you can loop around the building and there's a gate to go out, but they have like a sign on the gate that says something to the effect of if your trailer is over 40 feet long, don't go out this gate. Um, now, clearly they have that sign there for a reason. Something has happened along the way for them to decide they don't want trailers over 40 feet long going out that gate. Now. I can look at that gate and what's outside of it and inside of it and say I'm 100% confident that I could go out that gate. I'm actually, I'm looking at that gate right now. Um, I know I can get out of it um, just fine. But like I said, obviously if they have that sign there, they've had some kind of issue um, in the past with somebody tearing out a fence or who knows, I mean, obviously I don't have it, but, um, so anyways, so, based on that sign, my trailer's 48 feet long, so the one entrance that I can just drive around and pull straight out, they don't want me, or exit, I should say, um, they don't want me using, so I have to go in there and turn around and then go back the way I just did, 
Um, so that's the biggest area where I turned around. It's the biggest open area that they have. Um, but anyways, I don't li I don't really like doing that. I try not to turn around like that, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. So um, just try to keep it to a minimum so you don't destroy tires because tires are expensive and being an owner operator you get to pay for them yourself. Um, which is not fun at 400 bucks a tire. Um, I want to buy as few of those as possible. Uh, nice. There was something laying in the road there. I have no idea what it was. But I didn't want to run it over. And so I tried to tried to make my turn so that it would go right in between all of the axles of the trailer. I knew I wouldn't hit it with, my, with the tractor I went around it. But I couldn't go wide enough to go all the way around it with the trailer too. So I was, like I said, trying to position it so that it went in between all the axles. And it looked like I did. I have no idea what it was on the road. I didn't want to find out the hard way that it was something bad. You know, something going to pop a tire or something as we're talking about tires. Anyhow. Heading north, heading for uh, for Portland. So it's it's two hours and fifteen minutes, two and a half hours, something like that, from here to the yard. So it'll be almost two hours until I check in from the south end of Portland. So um, maybe I'll record out the windshield. Seems like the water's awful hot. Anyhow, that's it.